Awesome. So glad to be here. Um, I need the clicker thing. So I uh, said I'm currently with Freddie Mac. I'm not going to be talking about Freddie Mac right now. It's a story that, that pre precedes that employment. Uh, but I am in the D.C. area, in Northern Virginia. And one of the things that I love about that is all the stuff that's available to you in the D.C. area. Um, so this is my lovely family and the Capitol building, some pictures that we took last fall. Don't we look so normal? Right? We had a great photographer that did a really good job of tricking people into thinking that we are a well-adjusted family. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many of you have, have um, played around with the photography at all. There's a trick you can do with pictures that aren't quite good enough. You can make them black and white, and they look artsy, and all of a sudden they're great pictures, right? So here's a couple of those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is what my family actually looks like. Uh, I have four kids, and they are, uh, how you say, extra. Uh, they are a lot. And there are times when, you know, I'm not perfect. When I'm not at my best, there are times when I'm trying to have a conversation or a thought, and I, I find myself struggling to hear myself think, and I will turn to my kids, and I will yell at them, Stop yelling! And my beautiful, patient, caring, uh, thoughtful wife will pull me aside and say, you know, it's not the best way to actually get those results. Um, you're not actually communicating what you think you are. You're sending them mixed messages. Uh, and so that's a little bit about what I want to talk about with you today. Uh, with metrics, I'm not arguing which metrics matter and which ones don't. I'm here to tell you that if you're measuring something, it matters. And why is that? Okay. The first reason why metrics matter, or what you measure matters, is because it signals what your values are to the people that, that, that you're measuring them for. Okay, they measure, or they, they signal what your personal values are. They signal what your team's values are. They signal what your corporate values are. So I started my career as a software engineer. And we were in a siloed organization, and so we had the engineers over here, we had the testers over there, we had the ops folks over there, and then we had kind of all of IT uh, separated from the business. And the things that we measured were things like how up to date our tech stack was, and whether we were using proper coding techniques. And what we were not measured against were business values, business outcomes. In fact, as an engineer, I was expressly forbidden from communicating with any of my end users because their time was far too valuable and I would only distract and confuse them with my outlandish engineering ideas. Uh, and so I, I actually did very well as an engineer. I got promoted several times very quickly, um, got, I got some awards, and the, the thing that struck me as ironic looking backwards is on more than one occasion, we would be as a project team out celebrating the successful completion, the delivery of a project to spec. And while we were celebrating the, the exact same time, the same afternoon, our business counterparts would be off drafting the project charter to fix all the stuff they didn't like about what we just delivered. Um, what I understood to be valuable to our organization were compliance with technical standards, reducing coding violations, the things that were being measured were the things that were valuable to my leadership. And, and that's what, what drove my behavior. So uh, again, whether you think that it should or not, what you are measuring is signaling your values to your people. And so what I'd like you to do is I want you to think about what are the things that you value? What are the things that you want to signal to your team or to your organization that you value. I want you to take 60 seconds and either jot it down or turn to someone next to you and share what those one or two things are.
computer to internet. So I don't know how many of you guys saw, I actually had a little progress bar here. So when it gets to the end and flashes red, that's when the time is up, okay? I'm gonna be doing this a couple more times. Okay, so now, hopefully everybody has an understanding of what your values are, or at least what are the values that you wish to convey to your team, okay? That's the first way in which what you, what you measure matters. The second way is that it drives behaviors. I talked a little bit about how the values that were signaled to me as an engineer drove my behavior in that position. Uh, in addition to the actions that your measurements drive, they also drive attitudes and how people think about the work that they do or the way they approach their work. Put another way, it drives culture. There's a, an exercise that I don't know if any of you have done before where you say, let's say some outsiders, whether they're people from another team, another company, another planet, come and they're observing your team or your organization, what are the behaviors that they would observe? What are the ones that we want them to observe? That's one way of defining what your culture is or what you want it to be, okay? I, uh, after being a software engineer for a while, I got really into Agile. Uh, it was great, I, I found out that uh, all the things that I didn't like about engineering, I, I thought that professional software development was just supposed to suck, and uh, turns out it doesn't. <laughs> and and I, I got so into it, I was like, I, I can't just keep this to myself, I've gotta share it with other people. And so I got really involved with spreading uh, agile and agility, and uh, ended up becoming an enterprise-wide agile coach. And when our CIO first made the decision that that's where we were going, uh, we decided, okay, how are we gonna track our progress? We decided to track it based off of the percentage of projects that were classified as agile in our project tracking system. So at the beginning of the year, fewer than 10% of our projects were classified as agile. At the end of the year, less than 10% were not classified as agile. We could not believe how successful we are. <laughs> it was amazing. We basically transformed the whole company in less than a year, guys. <laughs> what we discovered was that our outcomes actually didn't change that much. Uh, the behaviors that we drove were changing your project classification <laughs> in the project tracking tool. Uh, that was what our metric, our measure, was signaling to our people, this is the behavior that we wanna drive. Check that box, change that classification, okay? So, I want you to think about what are some of the behaviors that the things you are measuring are currently driving? <clears throat> driving? <laughs> or <laughs> behaviors that you would like to drive within your team or organization? And again, I'm gonna give you 60 seconds, starting now. Flashing completed progress bar means 60 seconds is over. All right. So, oh, yes. So I, I did a dry run of this uh, with 
uh, a community group at my company, most of whom are not in the Agile community. And when I did this, nobody responded. They were like, what's going on? And I explained to them how the Agile community is like a cult. And when you, <laughs> you hold your hand up, everybody knows to do that. It's like a, it's an inside thing. Um, so, so now you, you've, you've hopefully have a better handle on what are the values that you want to signal and what are the behaviors that you want to drive. The things that you measure can help drive alignment between your values and your behaviors. Make sure that you're, you're not sending mixed signals to your people, okay? Um, after being an Agile coach for a while, I was actually moved up for, to Virginia to help uh, build out an office that we had uh, we acquired a small company there. We wanted to build up our, our presence in the DC area and, uh, and to build amazing products, right? To, to make sure that we were tip of the spear as, as we were mandated. And so we sat down the initial leadership team. We said, what do we want this office to look like? What do we want our culture to look like? What do we want our values to be? And then what are we going to do to try to reinforce that? What are the things that we're gonna measure, the activities that we're gonna have in order to, five years from now, have the, the office, the team that we wanna have? And over that time, I was there for about three, three and a half years. Uh, we had about a, a, every year, during those first three years, we basically tripled the number of engineers that we had in the office. Uh, we had less than 5% attrition and we had at least an 80% engagement score across all of our teams, uh, which signaled to us that the, the things that we were measuring and the behaviors that we were trying to drive ensured that not only did we like the people we were hiring, but they liked us back. And then as my team started developing, we built an a application for our employees that are in our retail stores to use. And it was basically replacing four existing legacy systems. You guys know what legacy means? It means profit generating, right? Um, older systems. And as we rolled it out, uh, we, when we first rolled it out, we said, we didn't shut down the old systems. We said, here's the new thing. Uh, you're, you're free to try it out, and you have until X date to be moved over to the new system. Within the first week, we had a 94% adoption rate. Uh, and by the time it was rolled out to everyone, our financial impact to the company was estimated to be $4 million a week. Um, everyone on my team spent at least an hour a week in their local store using the app with somebody that had to use it for their day job. Uh, we, we had measures and things in place in order to show this is what we value. These are the business outcomes that we want to achieve, and that's what we're going to be focusing on. Um, it was a great feeling. It, it really was to, to know that I was making a difference like that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it was determined that how I was going to be evaluated as a manager uh, was going to be um, different than the criteria that I had previously used. There's a quote from uh, James Wilbanks, he was an Army advisor. Um, he says, the problem as it often is are the metrics. It's a situation where if you can't count what's important, you make what you can count important, okay? Uh, oftentimes, especially when you're dealing with a very large organization, you're trying to figure out what to measure and, and what policies to enact, it's, it's tempting to go as easy as possible so that it can be rolled out quickly and efficiently. And unfortunately, that's not always gonna drive the things that you want it to drive. Um, before I kind of finish the story, I want each of you to think about a moment in time. Maybe it's right now. Maybe at some point in your past. Maybe you've been fortunate enough that it's never happened to you. But a time when a measure, a metric, an HR policy was rolled out whose results were counterproductive to the intent in which it was rolled out. Okay, so again, I'm gonna give y'all 60 seconds, starting now. Yeah, a, a, a time when a metric measure or, or HR policy had uh, an outcome that was counter to what it was intended to do. So we have a feeling way out there. 
the word. <laughs> Isn't it remarkable how short 60 seconds is? <laughs> Feels like a long time until you start talking. I, I know what it is for me. I could talk and talk and never shut up. Um, hopefully that was insightful for you. Hopefully this is helping you to, to view measures and metrics in a different way. Um, <laughs> hoo um, this quote actually came from a, a documentary series that came out a few years ago about the Vietnam War. And the problem with the Vietnam War is that previous wars, success was very easy to measure. Which cities had you captured? Where's the front line? Uh, couldn't do that with the Vietnam War. It's very difficult to determine success. They struggled with how they were going to define success. And the, the metric that they ended up settling on was body count. And as you can imagine, when that's the criteria for success, it led to some bad behaviors. Um, while my experience is not as extreme or dramatic as that, um, it's, it's still, it still hurt. Uh, I have no doubt that people who are in these situations and, and rolling out these policies and metrics have nothing but the best of intentions. They're trying to do what's best with the information they have available to them. Uh, in my situation, I was told that there was a new way to, uh, for our annual evaluation, annual evaluation process, um, we had to meet a forced distribution for ranking people, and that 40% of the people in our organization were gonna have to get below meets. Uh, no bonus, no cost of living increase. Uh, and and we've been building a great team over three years, and we were hitting some great outcomes. And my team wasn't perfect, and not everyone on my team was going to get the, the range that I would have liked for them to have anyway. Um, but it was a point where I said, I've, I've done all I can. I can't do anything further without giving people something they just don't deserve to get. Um, and the choice was taken away from me. And I had to uh, try to explain to someone on my team uh, why they were put below the line despite a lack of communication that they were faltering throughout the year. Um, it's important as we go through this process that we keep in mind our measures signal our values. Our measures drive behaviors. And if they're not signaling the values that we want, if they're not driving the behaviors that we want, we should reevaluate them. They should be seen as experiments and not law. At the end of the day, one of my values is when I come home, do I feel like I am the man that's deserving of the way that my kids look at me? Uh, and I decided that uh, I could not continue to be in that position uh, and, and still hold my head up high for my kids. And I ended up leaving. I left the team that I loved. I left a company that I, that I still love to this day um, and wish nothing but the best for them. Um, just, just couldn't stay there any longer. So, so keep, keep all those things in mind in whatever capacity you, you're in with respect to establishing measures and policies. Because at the end of the day, what you measure matters. Thanks. Thank you, buddy.